Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over this light that you see in my hands and that you guys saw in the intro. It is the Surefire Tactician. Now the technical name for it is the E2T MB, MB standing for Max Vision, but everybody knows it as either the Tactician or the James Yeager light. Now for those that weren't following the history and the development of this little guy here, uh, basically it's the brainchild of James Yeager. It's kind of everything he wanted in terms of a handheld fighting light. Um, now right up front. Uh, regardless of what you think of James Jaeger, I think he did a very good design with the uh, interface of this light and the size of it and the output, um, which we're going to get into here in just a second. But all in all, I really, really like the design. I think it brings some stuff to the table that other lights in the Surefire lineup just don't. And uh, all in all, very well thought out. But what we're going to do first before getting into the interface and all that stuff is step outside, take a look at the beam pattern compared to a couple other lights out there on the market and show you what kind of output you can expect from this light. After that, we'll get into the details and what I think of it overall. For those of you new to the channel, that corner there of the fence where the wood meets the iron is about 35 feet away, and then those trees are about 40 to 50 feet away, uh, depending on which tree we're talking about. Here you guys can see the output from the 800 lumen setting. Uh, it's got that max vision head, so the max vision is going to give you, as Surefire calls it, a wall of light rather than like a really, really throwy hot spot. So you guys can see there is still a hot spot there in the middle, which I'm focused right on the corner. And if we move it, you guys can see the hotspot does move, but there is a very uh, focused amount of spill. I suppose that's sort of uh, counterintuitive to say, but it's true. They definitely put an intentional amount of lumens out there on the edges and not just focused, giving you that peak candela like you could have with some other lights. Now to step it down there to the low setting, I'll just twist the head and there you go. There we go. That is going to be our low setting. You guys can see there it's not super bright at all and it takes a concerted effort to actually get it into that mode which i do like uh, for a tactical type of flashlight i like that and it's pretty easy just to rotate it back over and get to your 800 lumen settings and then again i'm going to rotate the head which we'll show you here in a second um, to get down to the low again we're looking at the beam pattern here with the tactician with that max vision head and just to contrast it here we have the uh, edc2 l so this is a 1200 lumen rated light. You guys can see the hot spot difference there on the corner. Uh, we're just going to kind of, again, here's the uh, Max Vision Tactician. And over here, we're going to have the EDC-2L. You guys can see in terms of intensity there on the right side of your screen, it's much more intense than the hot spot there would be on the Tactician. Again, EDC-2L, Tactician. But the EDC, the spill is probably not quite as good. Those trees across the lake there are about 130 feet away and you guys are looking at it right now with that max vision beam pattern you guys can see this little rosemary bush right here is probably 30 feet away 25 feet away and it lights it up with a lot of authority but it kind of struggles uh, due to the fact that it doesn't have a really bright hot spot to get across the lake now it's also raining out which is not exactly helping in terms of the output but you can see there it still lights those trees up pretty darn well it would do better than most lights from about two or three years ago i can tell you that much for sure here, to contrast, is going to be the EDC-2 again. You guys can see the way the throw uh, definitely works in terms of that peak candela hotspot across there. Again, we're going to have the tactician here on our left. And I'm not even sure if you guys can really pick it up too well um, where it hits those trees. And then there we have the EDC-2L. You guys can see in terms of candela, it's just on a different level. But again, different lights for different missions. With the beam comparison out of the way, we'll go over the details of the light. Uh, like we already mentioned, it has 800 lumens on high, then 5 lumens on low. Uh, out there reading the comments of what people have said in social media posts I've made about this light, a lot of folks were saying they were wishing that there was a 15 lumen mode instead of a 5 lumen mode. But for me, most things that I need just a little bit of light for, again, I need just a little bit of light. So I prefer the 5 lumens because that's going to give you better run time. So it's going to give you 94 hours with those two CR123 batteries um, in low and then 1.5 hours with that 800 lumen output on high. Overall length is right at 5 inches on the dot. Uh, the bezel diameter right here is 1 inch. So if you guys wanted to weapon mount it, you could use a one inch mount. You just have to uh, stick it right here on the bezel. It would be kind of awkward, um, but they also make smaller mounts. Again, if you guys want to weapon mount it, I think Frank Proctor makes one and I think Viking Tactics does as well. Again, though, that is not the intended purpose of it. It is possible to do so though, however. Um, it's gonna come in with the batteries and this little string here right at 3.51 ounces on my scale. So those are the basics of it. Uh, as you guys see, it comes with everything that 
is before you right now. So you get this little hook here, this attachment point on the tail cap, and then you also get this paracord. So um, this basically is designed to be used, again, as a fighting uh, type of light. And the way it's designed is that you have it in your offhand and you can have it like so, and that if you need to do mag changes or anything with your gun, it's not just gonna fall free uh, when you let it go, but yeah, it's right there uh, with the interface that you need to go straight into high. So that is why that is there. I know some folks have said they prefer to have some shot cord instead of paracord, so that way you have some elasticity to it. That makes sense to me. Um, if that's how you wanna carry it, I see nothing wrong with it. Again, makes a lot of sense to me for sure. Also, if you don't want to have the lanyard on there, it's very simple. You basically just squeeze this piece in and then you're just going to work it out like you would anything else on a keychain and you'll have no lanyard. So you can set that off to the side. Now getting into the actual operation of the light. So when you hit it, it's always going to come on in momentary on, right? So we're going to hit it momentary on on 800 lumens. Now there is a way to change that. We'll get to here in a second. And if you want constant on, you're just going to rotate the tail cap. Now, I really like that uh, for a self-defense oriented light. I think uh, James came up with a pretty good idea here in terms of the interface. And the reason is, uh, let's say, again, I'm right-handed, so we'll use my left hand, that I'm illuminating a threat. Whatever happens, I want to go behind cover. I want to do something else that doesn't need me to have that threat uh, lit up. I can immediately release. I don't have to turn anything. I don't have to click anything. I just come off, release, and the light is gone. So that's good, obviously, because if you're putting light out where you don't want to be and don't want people to know you're at, uh, you're doing something wrong. So that interface for a fighting type of gun is good. And then again, if you have a pause in the action and need constant, you just rotate it and you're good to go. So that is the tail cap there and how it works. Now the head here, again, you have that max vision head, which we sort of uh, already alluded to outside. We'll get into that here in just a second in better detail. But you can also go to low by rotating, if my hands would let me, uh, the head there. So you rotate the head about a quarter turn, and you'll go, again, just momentary into low. And if you want constant low, you turn, and it'll go constant low. Now, if you want to go from low to high, again, we're just going to rotate it over. Now, if you want to go from low to high, basically, you just grab the head, rotate it, and as you guys can see, we're right back to the 800 lumens, and if we want to turn it off the constant, you're just going to rotate, and if we need to get back into it, again, just hit the tail cap. Very, very intuitive switching system. Disassembling the light is pretty simple. We're just going to rotate the head, and you'll see here that we do have lubrication there on the threads. It's O-ring sealed, so you can submerge this light and not have to worry about it. Again, they have those two CR123 batteries in there. Uh, this one does not take 18650s. I know Surefire has come out with some dual fuel models uh, this year, but this is not one of them. Now, uh, let's address the one con I have of this gun while we have it apart. It is going to be um, this clip here. So the clip is good in that it's super strong and super durable. I will give them that. And my guess is that's what really the premise behind the design was. But I don't like the way that it makes you, it forces you as the carrier to use a uh, bezel up orientation. So basically you're gonna put it in your pocket and then you're gonna have this much sticking out of your pocket. Um, not a huge fan of that. I tend to be a bezel down kind of guy anyway, but I don't like a lot of things sticking out of my pocket. So something like this, for instance, on the uh, EDC L2 would be more my style, so that way you can have just a little bit of the tail cap sticking out. But even with this one, if it came out to here, I'd personally prefer it, so that way you can bury it a little bit deeper in. The good news, though, is that you can use other Surefire clips on here, uh, some of the two-way ones, and you can actually, basically, you're just going to take like a, a hammer very lightly and push it out, as you guys can see I'm doing there, push it forward. If I was to actually push really hard, it would all it would come completely out you can see there it's starting to go and you can replace it with a two-way clip from surefire if you want to um, and of course due to the shorter length there you can kind of see how far it would come down it would come down to just the tip there of the tail cap would be sticking out that's how i would set it up but again we're reviewing a light so i wanted to show you as it comes from the factory i know some guys are really going to like the way it comes uh, i get it uh, it's a personal preference thing but i do like the ability to seat it a little bit deeper in your pocket for sure at least for me so that is how it comes apart.
and how the clip works. I'm sure many of you guys out there haven't been able to handle one of these in person, so we're gonna give you kind of a quick uh, size comparison with a few other Surefire lights that you guys may have experience with. So up here is the 6BX Tactical. This is the new 600 lumen version of it. Uh, it's pretty traditional though in terms of size for Surefire. You'll see it has the one inch body, which is pretty much exactly the same size as the head here on the Tactician, like I alluded to earlier. However, out there on the bezel, it's much, much larger. And now you also see the difference that we have here with the TIR lens uh, from Surefire versus the Max Vision. The TIR basically just kind of bumps everything forward to create that broader spill. And this TIR is very deep. And you can see there the Max Vision does not have that. So EDC L2 is going to be similar in that regard. You can see it has that TIR type of lens. And it's a little bit fatter there on the head. In terms of the body, though, it's pretty much exactly the same in terms of size. Now, of course, you're going to get a little bit more output, the 1200 lumens like we showed you earlier with this one versus the 800. But really, the pattern is the big difference between the two, as you guys have probably already seen. And again, we have the G2X with the Max Vision head here as well. You guys can see that the actual reflectors there look very similar. And there's a reason for that. It's because they're both the Max Vision. So that's how it stacks up size-wise compared to some other lights out there from Surefire. There's a couple more points I wanted to elaborate on before we close the video out. So first and foremost is going to be that max vision pattern. Like I said, when you guys were looking at the actual output of it, um, it definitely throws a wide wall, which gives you good situational awareness in a close quarters fighting type of light. But with the 800 lumens, in my opinion, it's still enough to really uh, distract or disorient someone up close if you were to actually shine it in their face. I'm not going to do it at the camera because it would throw the sensors way off. But trust me, if you are in a low light situation and someone pals you with this in the face, it will distract you. It gives the person who's using the light the ability to either draw, step offline, uh, do whatever you need to do uh, to defeat the threat should you choose to do so. And of course, to realize the threat, in low light, a lot of times you have to have a light so that way you can make positive identification of the threat and what kind of tools they may or may not have uh, to engage you with. So from a fighting perspective, I think the beam output is just fine. If this was like a rifle light, then I'd probably want something with a little bit more throw, but it's not designed for that. That's just not what it does. Um, so there is that. I already mentioned the clip. We'll leave that alone. Um, and then the cost on this one, right? So this one, I think the MSRP is $149. And online, if you look around, you can generally find it for around 140, maybe less, depending on when you're actually watching this. Now, it's expensive, no doubt about it. A Surefire, though, makes about as bomb-proof a light as possible. There's a couple competitors that can kind of compete with Surefire, but really not many out there. And of course, it's made in the USA as well, uh, which a lot of folks like. But do you need to spend $140 to have a good EDC type of light? No. In fact, uh, right before you, earlier down on the tabletop, you guys saw a couple of good other Surefire offerings, um, but they're really not optimized for EDC type of use, like this light is, in my opinion. Um, and this one, really, again, great interface, great combination of size, weight, all of those sorts of things. I think it's a winner. Um, if you guys are looking for something like this light, this is one I would definitely take a look at. If you guys have any questions about this light that I didn't cover in the video, by all means, you can post down below in the comments section as always. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. If you're not subscribed, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button, rather, and I hope to see all of you in the next video.